Can you do that problem? Yes. yes. Sure. Order of operation says just do them individually because they're in your parentheses. Do your parentheses first, then check for exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So when we have these order operations with fractions, it's not like we're doing anything new. We're just applying the old stuff and putting it all together with the order operations type problem. So let's do this together. I'll give you one to do on your own after that. Let's start with this one. Now the first thing Felicia said is, well, we don't really want to have a negative in front of our fraction. It's just a little harder to deal with. So we're going to take that negative. We're going to move it to the top or numerator of our fraction. So instead of negative 1 half, we're going to have negative 1 over 2. Now, after you do that, after we move this, I'm going to rewrite it so you can see the steps. I'll leave this one alone because we're going to actually do that right now. With this problem, we of course can't add them right now because we don't have that common denominator. Can you tell me what is the LCD here? Yeah. Good. So that means we're going to have to multiply, so we're going to write that LCD, 10. This by 2 over 2. <coughs> and that by 5 over 5. That's going to give us a new set of fractions that has a common denominator. They're going to be equivalent, but they're just written, we're purposely unsimplifying them for now. What's this fraction going to become? 5 tenths. Negative 5 tenths. Plus how much? 2 tenths. Two tenths. Two tenths. Hey, right there, we got a common denominator. That worked for us. That's exactly what we wanted to have happen. Now, on this fraction, you know, maybe we'll work this down to one fraction and we'll work this one down. Does that make that work for you? Yeah. Let's, let's do this all the way since we're on a roll. We've got negative 5 tenths plus 2 tenths. Of course, that means we're going to have something over 10 because we know that common denominator doesn't change. I'm going to put negative 5 plus 2. That way we can see that it's not really a fraction problem anymore. It's really just an addition problem. Negative 5 plus 2 gives you how much? Negative 3. Now we can finish this off. How about the 7 eighths plus 1 eighth? Do we need to do anything there to find a common denominator? No. That's great. It's already got one for us. So we're just going to write this as... 7 plus 1 over 8, that's going to be, one. yeah, 8 over 8. Yeah, that's 1. Okay. We didn't really change anything on the right fraction from there to there. So here we've found our LCD after moving our negative to the numerator. We've used the LCD to find equivalent fractions. We have added those fractions together, we get negative 3 tenths. The other fraction is a little bit easier. We had 7 eighths plus 1 eighth, they already had a common denominator. We make those one fraction, we add, we simplify, it's still 1. Hey, tell me something, what's it mean when you have negative 3 tenths time, negative 3 tenths and a 1 right there? What operation are we dealing with? Multiplication. What, what's going to happen then if we have negative 3 tenths times 1? So what's our answer? Negative 3 tenths. That's it. Negative 3 over 10. So anything times 1 gives you that, that same thing back again. Where you going to feel okay with this so far? Good. I'd like to give you one on your own. See if you can do the same thing. Very similar problem. So work through the order of operations, deal with your parentheses, then exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. If you finish with this quickly, if you finish that one, check out this next one, see if you can handle this. 
You gotta really think about order operations on the next problem though. I'll be walking around right now for just a little while. Should almost be done with that. If you need help, let me know. I'll go ahead and help you. Finish with the first one, which is this one. Great. Hopefully, you're able to try that one. We're going to get to that in just a second. Let's go back to our first example, though. We do have a couple parentheses. They're being multiplied together, but inside those parentheses is our first step to add those fractions with one another. Now, of course, we have to find an LCD to do that. So, in our first fraction, we've got one fourth plus two thirds. LCD gives you what out of that? Twelve. Okay, so. I'm going to rewrite it so we see what's going on. If our LCD is supposed to be 12 here, then we're going to have to multiply the 1 fourth times 3 over 3. And we're going to have to multiply the 2 thirds times 4 over 4. I'm going to work this fraction all the way down, then I'm going to work with this set of fractions over here. So on our left fractions, we've got 3 twelfths, and of course we're going to get 8 twelfths. Did you make it that far, folks? Yes. If I combine them, now that we have an LCD, I get 3 plus 8 over 12, or that's going to give me 11 twelfths. Raise your hand if you've got 11 twelfths for those first fractions. Great. Okay, now we got to deal with our next set of fractions. When we're trying to add 11 halves plus 1 fourth, what is your LCD there? Four. Yeah, we don't want to pick something like 8 or, or 12. That's too big. It makes more work for us. Our LCD is already the 4. I just have to multiply this by 2 over 2. If I multiply that by 2 over 2, I'm going to get 22 over 4 plus 1 over 4. That makes the LCD for us. That means we can add those fractions together now. Of course, we're going to get 22 plus 1 over 4. 23 over 4. Would you raise your hand if you're okay with this so far? Good deal. What, what now? Okay, so this does mean multiply for sure. We have 11 twelfths times 23 over 4. I'm going to move over here. Eleven twelfths times twenty-three over four. How do you multiply fractions? Do you need a common denominator to multiply fractions? No, no. That don't waste your time. All we need to do is extend our line, make sure we have multiplication, so that way if we can simplify, we can simplify. And then we look to simplify. Can you simplify those numbers? No. You got eleven and twenty-three, which are both primes. You got twelve and four, which aren't, but they don't have any common factors with eleven and twenty-three. So can you simplify them? No. 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 You just got to multiply them. How much is 23 times 11? 263. 253. 253? 253? Yeah. 12 times 4, I can do that one. 48. 253 over 48. Rich, have you got that? 
Raise your hand if you got all the way down to here. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's all separate. It's fantastic. Would you like to do that problem? Yeah. It's kind of fun. We're going to do this right now. Then you got to be pretty darn good at order operations and not let yourself be tricked by a problem like this. Because it's not a tricky problem. It's not meant to be a tricky problem. But you know what? A lot of people actually make a mistake on that problem. You know what a lot of people do on this problem? They, they, they think order operations, and here's the pro process that, that they do. They go, okay, parentheses. Well, I don't have it. No problem. Exponents. Well, I don't have it. No problem. Multiplication. Oh, I got multiplication. Let's do multiplication. No. But that's a mistake people make. People make this mistake all the time. I need your eyes on the board here real quick, please. People do this all the time. They'll go, oh, well, this is a pretty easy problem. This is 5 sixths divided by 1 12. Can you see how easy that would be to do? If you're going fast, or if you really don't get the order operations, or if you really think that multiplication comes before division all the time, you're going to do that. Are you getting the right answer? No. Definitely not. No, you're not. Because right now, you'd be multiplying by 12 over 1, right? You'd simplify the 12 with the 6, you'd get 5 times 2, you'd get 2 over 1. Is, the, is your answer. If you did it this way, you'd get the answer 2. What we're going to get next is the correct answer, and it's not going to be 2. So this way, not so much. Can't do that. What is the appropriate thing to do? If we're not supposed to multiply first, what are we supposed to do? Divide by 6 by 1 third. Because, you know, or operation says parentheses exponents. We don't have those. Multiplication division. But that's not multiplication necessarily in front of division. What it means is you check out those two things, and whatever one comes first from left to right, you do that first. So whereas this looks like you're supposed to do multiplication, no, division came first. Those two things are tied together. You do whichever one comes first left to right between division and multiplication. So in our case here, we're going to ignore that one-fourth for a moment. Mm -hmm. Just a moment. And we're going to go, okay, ignore that. Can you do that problem? Yes. Yes. That's the first thing you're supposed to do. This is supposed to be 5 sixths. And then what do I do with that one-third? Times, Times two. Flip the one-third. Okay, that's called a good. And I, instead of dividing, I'm multiplying. Huh? So do you multiply first? No. Not in this case. Not in this case. You divide first. You divide first. Not this one. This one. Divide first. Ignore the one fourth for just a while while we, we, we handle this part of the problem. And now if you'd like, you could put this all together, right? You have multiplication of fractions. That's fine. You can. Yeah, you can. You can do one of two things. You can either say, oh, this is multiplication. Do you need a common denominator to multiply? No. no. So you're multiplying two fractions here. Here's option one. Option one is you extend your line, put the dot, dot. Extend the line, put the dot, so we are now multiplying. Can you simplify some of those numbers? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's, really six. Six. that's it. That's all you'd be able to simplify. You'd multiply what's left over. Or, going back to here, you could do these two at a time. You could do the 5 times 3 over 6 times 1. Simplify this fraction and then put the 1 fourth next to it and simplify that one as well. That just takes a little bit more time and extra step. Which one would you rather do? Would you make one big line or do this two fractions? Big line. We'll do the big line. I'll show you both as a matter of fact. So here's option, option 1. Option 1 is 5 times 